Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome, welcome back to another little pickup video. It's finally that time of the year where I can actually go game hunting now that I am done doing a whole bunch of like convention dubs and life had hacked it. But now it's nice and slow. I have some money and it's time to go pin it at random y'all sale, pawn shop, whatever it might be, uh, to try to continue my collection of video games and little odds and end things here and there somewhat. And I actually got a pretty good haul uh, this last weekend. Uh, luckily enough that a uh, local video game, I get resale quote unquote, actually had a uh, y'all sale since uh, the person usually do, seem to seem like anyway, seem to actually do a guad sale and nothing but video gaming geeky stuff like once every like two, maybe three weeks. Uh, and usually when I go there, I usually pick up a whole bunch of stuff since everything is horribly underpriced uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's for no distance. I pretty much got a whole bunch of random knickknacks here. So let's go ahead, let's start off and start going over this uh, with uh, something that I bought mainly, mainly just because uh, I haven't seen this in years. It pretty much pointless at that point in time, I imagine, uh, since we are going to be talking about some uh, big box PC games. And uh, yeah, we're going to start this off with, of course, Half-Life 2 Episode 1. Had it for two bucks, uh, and yeah, I, like, I remember seeing it, I think, once in passing, uh, back when Half-Life 2 uh, Episode 1 came out, uh, but like, I imagine like most of it probably did uh, around that time, I know I did. Uh, I ended up picking up the orange box that had, you know, everything in it. Episode 1, 2, Team Fortress, Portal, Half-Life 2, uh, and whatnot. Um, but I never actually owned the standalone version. And, yeah, this, this was more so just like, yeah, I haven't seen this in, like, a good, god, what, like a decade at that point? So, yeah, I ended up grabbing that. Like I said, I usually don't grab big bot PC games since I'm not really a big PC gamer. But every once in a while, if I see uh, one that is cheap enough, I will grab. And also, I, I do really like big bot PC just because of the giant artwork and also a lot of the detail that go into a lot of PC games, especially the early old they are. But yeah, other than that, you know, I mainly did to console up, and pretty much the rest of the collection that I got is, of course, console up. Uh, we are gonna go back in time, uh, just know some of the tags that is on this is not actually what I paid for it, since they did a giant bundle deal here. I ended up kind of in the process of going back and grabbing a whole bunch of PF1 games that I grew up playing back in my m mid to late teen days. Uh, and because a lot of my PF1 game kind of got vanished into the void, I, I imagine a lot of you probably know how that is with like siblings uh, and random friends that would bottle copies and then never bring them back. But I ended up finding something that is probably easily, easily probably like my top 10 favorite PF1 games uh, that I have not actually owned since I was like 14, 15, I think. Uh, and of course, that game is Tony Hawk. Gator 2. I freaking love Tony Hawk 2. To be totally honest, the four, I get four to Tony Hawk games I absolutely love. One, one is great, two is just super iconic. Uh, and then, of course, my favorite is still Tony Hawk 4. Tony Hawk 3 was, I get good. It, it, that was one of them Tony Hawk games that always, just like, I liked it when I was playing, but at the same time, I would pick two over three, and then four over three. It a whole thing. But yeah, like Tony Hawk 2. I freaking loved it back in the day. And I spent so much time with the map editor. Uh, and then, of course, just trying to unlock everything in it. This, this, this game is probably, what, easily the the most packed Tony Hawk game? At least of the original Pokédo, I get foursome, I guess. So yeah, I ended up uh, grabbing a this bad boy for pretty much a I think a dawdle is what I ended up grabbing it for. So yeah, I ended up getting it marked down from five to a buck. Another little thing here, another game that I uh, pick up. We, we are going to be all over the place here console wide today. Just a heads up on this. I, I usually don't buy a lot of Wii games here. Uh, since I only really go after the ones I want. Uh, when, when I'm like Nintendo console, it's very odd 
in some way. Maybe not so odd now thinking about it. Uh, could usually elite well I am uh, in the country. Uh, Nintendo games are usually pretty hard to come by. Uh, and if you do see them, they usually pretty offensive for the most part. Uh, but lucky enough, the Wii is not really one of that, I'm guessing, just mainly because of how popular the Wii was overall. But still, you still only see, like, this normal handful of games that you would see anywhere. You know, the, the Mario Kart, Mario Party, the Wii Sports, you know, the, the normal stuff. Uh, but I do keep an eye out for a whole bunch of Wii games I've been, I was meaning to buy back in the day. Just never got around to it. Because Nintendo console. Me and Nintendo have always had an iffy relationship where, like, most of the time I enjoy them consoles. But I usually don't buy them games day one. And then time just pass and I just never get them. And this is kind of one of them cases here. Uh, which, from my understanding, since this is a sequel, it pretty much... I actually put to fix everything to my knowledge that was wrong with the original version and also actually being extremely playable and of course that is Red Steel 2. I remember being super hyped for Red Steel when that was originally announced back in the launch lineup window time period. Uh, but never got around to it and then I hold fairly eh about it. But the second game I have only heard good things about it for the most part so like I think that one was also a dawdle, so just like, yes, I don't actually own that, so I will go ahead and grab it. Uh, and, and now, moving moving once again to all the console generations here, another, another game that I didn't own, or uh, I didn't own it on the Xbox originally, because this is an Xbox original game here, I didn't own because all my friends had it, and they was all about it, and I had my own issues, and it... It, I, I get to be with like a story time here. Like, how, how many of you back in the day that had friends that had games that gush about it constantly but wouldn't let you play it and then you just kind of get like torn off from it because of it? We're kind of one of them. Uh, I've been meaning to pick it up for the last few years. I've once again, like most things in my life, I just like, I haven't really got around to it too just now. And yeah, that game is, of course, Star Wars The Night of the Old Republic. Because I finally got around to playing this, like. Three years ago, four years ago, I got like halfway through it over on the PC copy. And they had it there, and since I was bundling and getting a whole bunch of money off anyway, why not grab it? Because I think these was, I want, I want to say the Xbox games were like three bucks a pop, I think. Because I think it Xbox up the PS4 was like three bucks. So yeah, like, why not? I haven't actually owned it, and like I say, kind of it kind of burnt into my memory in a lot of way. Uh, and continuing with Xbox games here, uh, a game I ended up picking up for Sam. Since Sam, for anyone that not a well, she is a, a big sim collector. Uh, wanting to pretty much get every sim every ma ever made on every console, that, and I get technically PC, that they have been on. And he'll want, I believe we have the PS2 copy of this, but once again, or OCD of collecting. And so I ended up grabbing for all, since when she, once she saw it, she kind of went off with it. So I'm like, yeah, I get that coming home with me. And that is uh, the orbs sims in the city. I don't have much nostalgia, nostalgia for this at all. This is like one of them games I remember just seeing in passing. Because I wasn't that interested in a lot of the console sim. Because at that point, I actually had a PC. And I was playing sim on PC. And well, the console sims never really did it for me. Because I always felt like they were way less. I get content feel as like the PC sims. But I do know that one is actually more so before been up because I think I think this is what just trying to wise up in the hierarchy of like film like cultural in city in the mid 2000s in a way I might actually check it out because like I said I remember seeing reviews of it and seeing it in magazine but never paying much attention to it but here a game that I did pay so much attention to the case is totally wrong uh I guess they didn't have the original case for this and so I guess they're fine uh because I actually been looking for the game for a while and if anyone have a um, the jewel cape for this, please let me know in the comments. Maybe we can make a deal, trade something. Cause I would like to have the actual cape for it. But the game itself, I've been hunting for for many, many years. Uh, this seems like one of them cult classic type of game where only a handful of people know of it. But the people that have no, known about it and have played it absolutely loves it. 
I am no Disney heel, uh, because I played it that when it came out. Absolutely loved it. I ended up renting it from, like, a local shop. I ended up buying it on PSN when it came available over on the PS3. Played through it. Once again, absolutely loved it. Uh, and of course, that game is Future Cop LAPD. Uh, so I am super happy to actually have this in my collection now. Finally, any of it is technically loose. Any of the car, uh, I get the... <laughs> The case it came in with for Quat Team Racing. For whatever reason, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe that was just the fail cake they had laying around. I have no idea. All that matters is I have Future Cop now. And once I get a cake for it, my life will be complete. <laughs> and like one of like my Holy Grail P at one games I've been doing care of. Any of I don't think the game was is that offensive, because I think I ended up grabbing it for like two bucks. So uh yeah. But then again, I feel like at the y'all sell go sell sale thing, I can't really go by a lot of the prices. And like I said, a lot of it was super undercut. Any like the super wealth up he had was like the he was like he was selling like a collector. I don't know exactly what the collector edition was for, but it was like a collector N64. My knowledge of N64 is like very slim. Uh, and I know from looking it up online, it was like I think going for like five, six, seven hundred somewhere in like the high hundreds, and he had it for sale for like I think. 180 I think uh so any like the super offensive stuff he had it like so much under cut uh so yeah I don't know how much future cop go for nowadays but I don't care because I I'm just happy to have it uh and speaking of other things I'm happy to have uh we got we got us uh, some GameCube games because once again like the Nintendo stuff I don't see GameCube games that often when I do see them, once again, they overpriced. But here, if I probably had a little bit more money, I probably would have bought all of them. Because he had a whole bunch of GameCube games. It was no, like, super great ones, other than, like, maybe one or two I have here. But he had a whole bunch of, like, the Madden dub, NBA dub. Had some, like, movie tie-in games. So, yeah, nothing, like, super, like, great, great. But just because I never see GameCube hardly, I was almost tempted to find them all. Since I think they all was only, like, a buck a pop. But, whatever, uh, I did pick up a giant stack kill of GameCube games. And let's start off with one I'm actually really happy about, because I always wanted to play it. It was a want title for the GameCube, but I never actually had a chance to grab it. Probably, mainly just because I didn't actually own that many GameCube games, and also I got my GameCube and Epoch pretty much at the same time, and that came with Shamu 2 and the Halo, and um, I was gone. For that generation and GameCube were kind of just nailed. But yeah, I never got around to grabbing it to literally jump down. I'm actually really happy about it. And of course, that game is a way, way, uh, what, Blue Storm? Yeah, Blue Storm for the GameCube, which I want to say that it was a long title. And I know this is one of them games that people still put up on a high regard. And I'm still surprised we have never seen an actual sequel to it, to my knowledge. I think there was, what, one on like the DS, I think? But actually, a straight up sequel for a console. I'm still surprised about that. But then again, it seems like Nintendo just kind of have... If it's not Mario Kart, they just don't care about racing games, I guess. But, but yeah, ended up grabbing that. That was like pretty much the holy... I, I, I guess I shouldn't say holy grail, but... Like, probably, like, the most, like, oh, wow, this is here, I'm, I'm getting this. Speaking of another game here, this is one of them, like, I want to replay. I will probably do a video on this at some point. Because I'm super curious to see how well it holds up. Uh, because this is a game I absolutely loved when it came out, but I can't vouch to how good it is anymore since I haven't played a game in a good probably, what, 19 years, 18 years, something like that. Uh, and of course that is a 007 Agent Under File. I played this over, I want to say I played it on the PS2, and I absolutely loved it. I love all the Jane Bond games, that one was my favorite. Uh, at the time, and like I said, I'm cu I'm really curious to see how well this actually holds up. So it looked like I might have to get my Wii out because I don't actually have a GameCube anymore. Which maybe one day because the guy always had like a crap ton of GameCube up. He just always have other stuff. I want more. Maybe at some point I will get my Wii out, plug this bad boy in, and give this a a go, uh, and see about making a video about it. And see if it still holds up because I'm really curious. And speaking up games that. <laughs> a game I never owned, but I think it I think it's fairly mediocre for the most point. You will see, I I, I get my assuming a mediocre. 
might be accurate because you will see momentarily. But like I said, most of the GameCube up here that he did have, I pretty much grabbed that wasn't movie tie-in or fourth game seal. Like I said, for like a dollar or two, why not? And this is a no dissing here with Sonic Heroes. Uh, if I remember right, they were the one that you had to play with three characters at the same time, I believe. I, I know, like, to be honest, like, in passing, the impression all we got from people, I know, uh, this is not, like, a bad Sonic game. Uh, because, you know, Sonic games after that was a whole new level of bad. But yeah, from my understanding, this is not bad bad, it's just there, I guess. Not great, not bad, not good. But yeah, like I said, for like a dollar or two, why not? And going back down the rabbit hole of more Extreme Force games that I'm super nostalgic for. I never actually played this on the GameCube because I originally had this up on the Xbox. Mainly because of the Xbox version, you could actually play your own audio or your own music tracks, which I did. But yeah, that is of course Dave Miller Freestyle BMX 2. So yeah, like I said, I absolutely love this on that thought. This was like one of them games that was in that time period of like the Tony Hall. Oh my, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of the name of the other one. Like not Dave Miller, was it wasn't like Matt something. Oh god, the names are gaping me. It's been so long since I fought or like a dream fourth up. But yeah, like it was a, it was a whole bunch of like bike games. From my memory, I believe this is pretty much controlled the same way as uh, being at Triple X. Well. The smut, I guess. But yeah, like I, I remember, I remember very fondly, Jake. I get biking around in a game in the very fourth level at Wood, was it Woodwalk? I think was the name of the park, uh, slash like camp. I remember loving it so much. Any if you know the Tony Hawk game was still like so far superior. But yeah, I still, I still super enjoyed it, and I grabbed that because why not? Uh, and then the last thing I grabbed at the free market is a actual new console might i add here so let me grab it shall we and of course i got this for i think it was 35 yes 35 once again did count because fun doing so probably realistically were more like 20 25 ish and it came with two games which is nothing too special to my knowledge one of them might be i don't know and of course that is me a Sega Genesis complete with uh, NHL 95 and Battleship uh, Quasit Naval Combat game. So yeah, like I said, it was marked for 35, probably got for more like 20 something. The two game with it. And my whole thing about the Genesis, honestly, he had this, uh, what is it, Mark 2, I think? I think it marked 2. It didn't model. He had that, and he also had the Mark 3 for, I think, the same price. Uh, but I ended up going with the Mark 2 just because I am way more nostalgic for the Mark 2 since that was the Genesis I grew up with. Because uh, I didn't get a Genesis right away because, uh, you know, like, most kids, Super Nintendo was a thing. And also, I don't even remember how I got my Genesis originally. I think I ended up getting it from, like, one of my grandmother friend grandkids or something. I don't know. Either way, I haven't had a Genesis in forever. I've been meaning to grab one, and mainly just for nostalgic reason. And the main reason I went with that, because I was debating between that, a GameCube, an N64, and then the guy had like five Super Nintendos that looked like they've been a door shed for the whole life, so they're not yellow, they were nothing. Uh, but then again, the guy does do repels and clean up, so who knows, maybe, maybe he did the... the what was it, lotions, sun queens, what, whatever it is that you can look up how to get with a yellow, yellowing a console. I don't know if he did that or not. But I kind of ended up deciding on the Genesis, mainly because uh, about, what, two years ago now? I think I made a video about that. I know I have pictures a little bit up on my Twitter on my Instagram, which, by the way, quick kill to see that up. Um... I ended up picking up a giant, like, anime bundle for, like, 50 bucks that came with, like, nine tokes of random geeked up. It was mainly, like, manga, anime, uh, game soundtracks, and whatnot. And one, one of them totes was literally full with nothing but Genesis games. Oh, I got, like, 40 Genesis games laying around that I can't play because I didn't own a Genesis. So I ended up deciding to go with that because nostalgia, and I have the game for it. And I don't have any Super Nintendo games anymore. And my GameCube, I can easily play on the Wii. So, I ended up being like, I'm going to wait on that. 
the N64, just like another thing where I don't have any game for that, any of the guy we're doing pack-in deals, but I will worry about that for another date. So yeah, I ended up grabbing that the also, that pretty much the also collection. And I ended up grabbing two other things. Or I got technically three other things. Uh because like most people I have caved because they are dirt cheap right now because Sony do not want them on Thor shelves anymore, or I get the Thor's not want it on Thor shelves anymore. Cause lucky enough, I get technically lucky enough, during Prime Day they got marked down to twenty bucks. Some of you might actually know what this is now. But I wasn't able to get it during Prime Day because I was a bloke since that was only a day after I got back from the con. Uh, and they sold out, I think, pretty much immediately. Lucky enough, uh, at Walmart, they, uh, was also 20 bucks, technically. They were 20 bucks online, not on the, not in actual store, but lucky enough, since Sam does do work at Walmart, she know the whole protocol of how to, you know, pipe change it, you know, all that jazz. And she happened to help out one of the corks at the time that couldn't figure out why it was still showing 40. Got it marked down to 20. And then on top of that, got a dig count, which took off, I think, another, like, three dollars. So got it down to, what, that 16, 17-ish bucks? Which, honestly, at that point, like, sure, why not? The thing, easy to mod. I'm honestly just curious to see how bad it is. I do need to open it and set it up. And, of course, that is the PlayStation Classic. Yeah. As I was talking about earlier in the video, I absolutely loved the PS1. I didn't buy it because it was a train wreck, as you all probably know. Lucky enough, it's super cheap now. The modding is literally like two steps and not hard at all to mod it, uh, which is what I'm technically planning on doing here after I look and see truly how bad it is for its hand. So I ended up grabbing it for, like I said, like $17, $16. Uh, and now jumping to something that I totally <laughs> not in the gaming wheelhouse at all, any if I did technically find these at, at GameStop, which I don't usually try to shop there if I can help it. But I saw these at the con, and I wanted them. The person I think was charging 13 bucks a pot for them. I didn't buy it, which in return at the time I was kind of kicking myself heel, uh, because my original th thought was like, because it was like in the gaming part of the con, uh, because they have like two, the con I go to have two distant doors. One, one is for like the gaming stuff that in the gaming hall. And then in another hall, the whole artist alley door. You know, the normal routine. The video, uh, door actually opened, I think an hour before they actually opened up, uh, audit alley and whatnot. And I saw these and I was like, I will come back in like an hour because I want to see if anyone else actually had them for cheaper. Came back and they were gone. So I was uh, I was extremely uh, like kicking myself for it because I actually really wanted these, but I was being cheap, like I am. Lucky enough, went to GameStop, found one of these. I think for like ten bucks. Ended up going to GameStop because Sam kind of went on a uh, buying these as well and ended up buying uh, a whole bunch of Yu Yu Hockey Show ones. So yeah, let's just say I have a giant hot topic bag for the thing that need to go somewhere. But these are the two I bought because I absolutely love, love this show and you haven't watched it yet. You probably need to. And of course that is a let go. So I ended up getting both of these little guys for like I think 9 or 10. So we got the little angry one with the chainsaw and then we got all oh, I'm I'm not I'm not crazy or gonna kill you all in your sleep a wet go. So these were the two I actually seen at the con. I got them for like three dollar cheaper each. So I'm happy. Any if I were kicking myself there for a few days to actually found these bad boys. Supposedly there is one more out there, number twenty three, which is or in or walk or they uh giving devil horns that I'm on the hunt for now. I need one more in the collection to be done. I don't usually buy pops. But Aleko is a special occasion mainly because I love the show. And second of all, it's literally these all the actual like character designs. <laughs> if you have seen the show, they all pretty much like one to one with how pops look. Uh, so I ended up caving, buying them because they're like, they are cool, they all Aleko, and they don't look like pops. I, I guess you could say they look like pop, but you know, the character designs are one to one heel. So it only makes sense, I guess. But yeah, that is everything I picked up that weekend when I was out guasso hunting. 
and that video have turned out a little bit longer than I was affecting. So with that, I'm going to go ahead, head on out of here, figure out what to do with all this stuff. Of course, be sure you do the like, favor, subscribe, sacrifice, and baby. I, I mean, wait a minute, that probably just got me demonetized. Uh, oops. Oh, well, I wasn't monetized to begin with. Uh, and uh, do what you got to do here on YouTube, and I will catch you guys in the next video. So to then, have a good one, my dudes.